out south of uh, Boston, Massachusetts today. Checking out a 1967 Shelby GT350 with some upgraded GT500 badges someone put on, on there along the way. Uh, the car's got original 1966 Shelby wheels on it and they need to be cleaned up but no major curb scuff seen on the car or on the wheels. Original uh, Shelby tag present. I'm not going to focus in on that at the moment. Uh, 289 Hypo motor. This engine's not uh, VIN stamped down there above the pan rail. It does have the Hypo heads 21 on this one and 20 on the other. Original uh, date correct radiator. Original steering box tag is present and matched up correctly. This dual quad intake is not a correct setup for the 289 car, so the dual quads are incorrect and so is the intake. Those um, valve covers, the raised letter valve covers that are not uh, hollowed out numbers, can't think of what those are called, but those are correct. closed letter uh, valve covers. The We dropped the starter and took a look at the uh, casting date, 7A30. Um, we already bolted it back up. So the uh, block was cast 1967, January 30th. Uh, the assembly stamp, B15. So it was assembled uh, February 15th. And the car was a second week in April build. Sent down to Huntsville, Alabama the third week um, of April 1967 where it lived its entire life until it uh, came out to the East Coast not too long ago. Shock towers are in really nice shape. Uh, no evidence of repairs or replacement as well as the aprons, original crush points present, original stapled rubber strip along the core support has not been removed. Shelby uh, VIN stamp was stamped into the apron there matching the Shelby tag. Correctly mounted uh, transmission cooler ahead of the core support. This fan shroud was uh, changed, that's a 69 fan shroud, but correct date code, four blade steel, uh, C60E on the uh, cooling fan. I mentioned that that's a December 66 dated distributor. This air cleaner, of course, doesn't belong because it matches up with the dual quad setup, which doesn't belong to this car. Firewall's in good shape. Exhaust manifolds, uh, we match those up as well. Those look correct. Alternator doesn't have a date on the case. Original yellow top coil with the uh, old Bakelite connections and the Coating is getting a little worn there. The engine cranks over, but the car hasn't run. Gas smells very old. And uh, also, when they originally installed this Shelby tag, I'm going to show you something underneath. Up in the uh, wheel well, the back side of the apron was uh, sanded. And you can see the what's left over of the stamp from the back side, original Ford stamp. You can see that on both sides of the car. While we're under here, the underbody itself is in nice solid shape. It's unrestored. Torque box only over here on the left side. Frame rails have a little bit of jacking depressions here, but no, no collision damage front or rear. Some original red oxide primer present on the floor tubs. C5AE coated. Uh, Ford 9 inch rear end. The car is still equipped with a top loader 4 speed. The tag reads HEH, which is a setup for a 390 car. Maybe a fair lane. A little bit of uh, seal leakage on the bottom of that case. But you can see some of the red oxide primer still up there invisible. Nice. Um, Exhaust system, vintage H-pipe. It's got the correct hangers in the back. 
and uh, correct transverse mount muffler setup still in place. Wheel tubs look real nice. Snubbers are still present. Those original exhaust hangers, that's what they look like. Back here in the quarter panel splashes. Car is very solid and original. Drain plugs still present. Little plug where the wire comes out for the reverse lights. The reverse lights are functional, operating. The chrome tips are pretty aged. Those are going to need to be changed for sure if the whole exhaust system doesn't go. This is the valance with no chrome bezels. Just the shaped cut in the valance panel. Uh, the finish is fairly patinaed and pitting on most of the chrome trim, including the bumpers, tail light bezels, mirror, etc. The magnetic adhesion is excellent throughout the body. Digital paint meter. We took readings all the way around the lower and center panels and 1.0 to 4.0 mils, which is very thin paint. Probably the worst chip on the car. Now this car is kind of cool. It's got the functional rear scoops. Not too many of the cars had that. When you read about the scoops, these were on the early and middle numbered cars. This car is kind of a middle, middle build car. The upper air scoops, the early 200 cars or so, had the eye level running light, and these, this car is not equipped with that. It is equipped with power steering, power brakes. It's got the red line tack that goes from six to eight thousand. Comfort weave vinyl cloth combo on the seats. Car's showing 41, let's see, 41,015 miles. The paperwork indicates that in 1977 it had about 150 less miles than that. So uh, the car doesn't appear to have been driven much more than 150 miles in the last 30 ish plus years. The pedal wear would be consistent with that of a lower miles vehicle. The kick, kick panels show a little bit of deterioration and the interior itself could stand to be cleaned up a bit. There's a shiny coating on the bottom of this dash that we're not really sure what that is. Never really set up. AM radio comes on, we hear static, horn works, turn signals work, brake lights, wipers, fan. Interior courtesy lights are all operating. Reverse lights working. I don't think there was really anything on the car we found not to be in working order. Other than the fact that it hasn't run in a long time. I'm going to turn the key forward and crank it over. When we crank it, we do hear compression. I just turned the key without pushing down the clutch, so the neutral safety switch is disconnected on this one. starting to wear the battery down but you can hear some compression going on we noted a matching spare matching the other 66 wheels which is uh, nice even though they're not correct for this car there's five of them which is kind of cool pulling the rug out of the way you can take a look at the tail supports here these don't ever appear to have been crushed or beat on or damaged original frames are on the tail lights Look aged and nothing unusual there. Surface rust, but no real heavy decay or anything seen. And uh, no cuts up here. No evidence of the quarter panels being changed left or right. No jack present. Original fiberglass stranding in the deck lid. A little bit of overspray. These seals are aged. They'll probably get changed at some point. Original car light glass all the way around the car. There's a small chip in the windshield down low. Driver's side, unfortunately. But it's out of the vision path. It could be used. Pretty good original glass. Windows roll up and down as they should. Transmission tag was HEH. Up here on the right side. 
Can't really focus in on it. I got good still photos of that, but again, doesn't appear to be correct for this vehicle. Frame rails look like they're in really nice shape. No evidence of perforations or separation along that area, which is commonly a problem on Mustangs. Floor pan's very stout and nice. Only one real area of rust here on the driver's side. This area as a hole. Water probably got in there a long time ago and it's about the size of less than my fist. But the rest of the body seems to be uh, fairly dry and well kept for a survivor. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise, autoappraise.com. Finishing up in southern Massachusetts on a 1967 Shelby GT350. Uh, for a prospective buyer. Checking out a car before he uh, sees it land in his driveway.